Ah, uh, thank you. God bless you. We really appreciate the call of God in our lives. And um, Bishop Peter Katimo, we 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 are so much encouraged to know that you are watching the preaching. You've subscribed. You've invited others. Some your families are uh uh uh, uh, in the, this program and we know if you follow on, follow on you will never be the same and there will be no shame in your life we also remind you of our big project in Nairobi we can't forget to tell you that the project of 10,000 members church is on and God is blessing us, remember we informed you it's, it's in Nairobi just the eastern part of Nairobi on Kagudo Road is a big, big sanctuary that at least more than, certainly more than 10,000 people can sit comfortably with a very complex, very good uh, modern office complex and upper parking. We are buying it at 340 million Kenya shillings, which is around 3 million US dollars. And in just name, I would like you to enter into this precious, elevated, powerful altar that God is raising in this nation to address the issues of life, to reach out to people with the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the masses of God. And you, you will get the details, bank, how you can join us. They can even give you my number. You can call me and make a plan of depositing something every week, every week. We are trusting that by the grace of God, we clear this loan. We've already gone quarter away. We remain with three quarter. And God can use you to do tremendous great things. Because God can bless us abundantly above what we can think or even ask. Secondly, God can bless you because of this project. Just tell God, God, what you've shown Bishop and what you are doing in Nairobi through Bishop Gatimo, bless me through that project. And I tell you, if you are very keen, you are very careful and diligent, you notice a unique mark of blessing in your income and also flow and openings that you have never experienced before. Just be faithful and consistent. Deposit, deposit. We will be acknowledging the, 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 uh, the, the reception of what you said. And we are so keen. People know we are giving reports every time that this came, we deposited. This came, we paid. This came, we paid. I also contribute a lot, plus other church members in Nairobi. So you are welcome. In the project now let's now embark on our preaching i think this is now the sixth the, the sixth lesson on stay safe from curses another area where we need to be very careful to avoid curses is practice of wrong faith practice of wrong faith one thing i've noticed is that there is a majority of brethren who used to be good, who used to be thriving and doing very well, peaceful, when they were exposed to cards, when they were exposed to evil practices, there is a way demons, powers of darkness, gain access into your family. And they take dominion and they produce their own life, their own, own fruits in your life. And one thing I've noticed about people who join uh, churches with the false prophets, diviners, churches where some evil people, the other day there's a drunkard, uh, a drug addict in a town somewhere in, in, in Left Valley who proposed to his wife and said, I'm going to the coast area of, of Kenya to obtain powers to start a church. That's a very funny statement. What are they doing? I'm going to 
South Africa, I'm going to Nigeria, I'm going to this town to obtain powers. That does not mean there's no true power of Christ operating. They are counterfeit satanic powers to deceive people. Somebody gets some demons, demonic powers to manipulate people. It's clear. The Bible says in uh, First Timothy, uh -huh, chapter 4, now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some, not all, not, not all, Please do not label the church of Christ as evil. Not all. God has his own church and is doing wonders. But some will depart from the faith. This faith means teachings, doctrines, practices that Jesus, the Holy Ghost, gives. They will depart from the faith, giving heed. They will listen to deceiving spirits spirits and the doctrines of demons this very for the, 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 the people should notice the content it talks about people who practice things using deceiving spirits and number two the doctrine of demons do you realize that just like now the way we teach about the doctrine of marriage demons have the same doctrine in another way. The doctrine of clean life in a youth. Demons have the same teaching in another way. We call them the doctrines of demons. You find now, you, I know, you find now that somebody is married, you go to a church, a place, and the pastor claims to be your husband. You know, chaotic things. You fight girls who are misused, molested sexually. Things that are so dirty. We call them doctrines of demons. And these doctrines of demons and deceiving spirits, they open up an individual, a family, a company two demons practice of demons one thing they destroy marriage go to these churches you never have stable marriage you find the one who had stable married marriage they proposed you know, you tell somebody else you this is not your husband we will give you another husband i've ladies in the church whose husbands joined the doctrines of demons eh? and when they visited those diviners can you imagine a lady with a diviner a false prophet telling somebody's husband your wife is not your true wife i am the true wife and now the husband leaves the wife and get married to that lady who is a diviner and they are doing that so much you it, well, they join those church that false prophets introduce their own husbands and their own wives to those who are already married and they break marriages. Very evil practices. They introduce things like spirit husbands, spirit wives. You fight people join those places. At the night they experience strange sex things, practices from powers in the air. Funny things, straight things. And eventually you realize when that happens, you never get married. If you get married, you have funny, funny, funny uh, gynecological problems emanating from the experience, satanic sexual experiences. And we need to get people from wrong faith. And you see when people join this wrong faith, you are threatened. You are told if you try to leave this church, you will die. I met a young man in the church. You know, I just felt somebody screaming while I was doing some work in the office. And I went to check. I found this brother down on the floor screaming. I said, no, brother, stand up. I want to know, are you sick? What's happening? And, and I said, in the name of Jesus, speak the truth. Idealized, he was possessed. 
And I destroyed the powers of darkness, cast out demonic works in him. And he narrated how he joined a cult in the streets of Nairobi. You know what he used to be? What he used to do? He used to bring all his salary at the feet of those false prophets. And they would just tell him, bring all the salary and then go away. A man who has enough money to pay for house rent, to pay for his wages, or bills, is so much possessed, so much manipulated, that he finds himself bowing to those people, give me all the salary, and he's told, walk away. Or, or maybe they give me just fair to go home. That's all. And they put on you funny clothing or funny marks just to show you that you are unique in the world and you are that's, those are funny, funny things. And, um, and, and somebody from our church found that brother in that church. He said, brother, come out. Come out. You will die in that place. When he came out, they already had, had put him into some series of rituals, which ended in warning, if you leave this church, you will die. So what the brother was wrestling against or fighting against is the spirit that was threatening him, threatening him to, with death. He was delivered. And I said, now you need to receive the right spirit, the Holy Spirit. He received the Holy Spirit. Later he got married. He was doing well in the church, doing very well. And he said, brother, I would like you to be awake. Because the area that these people or those demons you would like to attack you with, we need to keep them sealed, completely covered it closed by the blood of Christ. And he's doing very well. He has a good family. So, we need whereby these wrong faiths, you receive evil impartation. Eh? Fam families start practicing wrong and false faith and teachings. You find a youth who was in the university, they tell them, no, stop, that you stop pursuing your degree. Come and stay with us. You've, you left your, your young girl eh, pursuing some studies in medicine. When she joined wrong faith, she deserts the studies and withdraws also from you parents and joined that group where they just say, there's a brother in our church, the wife joined such a group. And in the evening, the wife came and said, you're not my husband. I've been told, you're not my husband. Hey, I've been told Bishop Gatimo, I should not meet that bishop. They also isolate you from people who can help you. So that you become weak. They drain you. And also they make you poor. And they make you also uh, foolish. Even if you are gifted, you can't operate. And that's what they are doing. They destroy because it's satanic. And according to the Bible, John chapter 10, verse 10, thief comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So, in Jesus' name, we need to pray for those people who have joined wrong faith. Yes. I remember this man who used to educate his children very well. He joined a church and they said, from today you are pastor. In that church, they never give support to pastors. They say, you are serving God. You are sacrificing. But the reality is this man has children who are supposed to join high school. And they used to perform very well. Four, I think five of his children never proceeded to high school. And they all got good marks. Why? Because the new teaching is not allowing him to educate children. We need to be very careful. And we need to keep our families. Pastors. Please teach people the true doctrine. Teach people the true doctrine. Equip people to resist the devil so they can resist the devil. They can be sensitive to evil. Let people experience the fullness of God in our churches. They don't need to seek things outside there. There's fullness of God, fullness of teaching, fullness of blessing in the church of Christ. You also need to be very careful. Because I've come to discover these, these patterns, these attacks are becoming complicated. There's a family 
whereby I don't know what you do, they are always prone to these attacks. You fight, the father is never satisfied with the true faith. So he goes to wrong faith. The mother follows. The firstborn joins a cult somewhere. The secondborn is a family where they are never satisfied with the true faith. They go to a true church, they want to bring chaos. They can only be satisfied when they join wrong faith and practice. And you find that family, everybody, everybody has gone astray. And that's why we need to be very careful. Because these wrong practices, wrong faith, they are opening up families to curses. Families used to be blessed. Families that, that used to practice uh, the true life and true uh, faith, they end up being invaded by demons. What the Bible says, deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Another thing is allowing disobedience in the family. This is something that happens when parents become passive. You are not so clear in faith. You are not so clear in leadership. You are not so clear in discipline. You are not so clear in direction. You are not so clear in decision, family decision. It is passive. You are just passive. It's like, like the way in the I did in the New Testament, whereby the children were so evil. He was just a passive, not active parent. Somebody fornicates in the church. Somebody fornicates in the in the in the in the in the temple, and uh, and the, and the priest has no interest. You know, no. We need to be concerned. We need. Well, are enough? Let's know. If your son got late, where were you? What's happening? If the doctor is becoming strange, and it's not good to wait until people become strange. It's good to know in the world there are things that we need to defend our family from. Don't leave your family uncovered until the only thing you do is to react when things invade the family. It's, we need this allowing disobedience in families has become a problem. Being passive when raising children, failure to offer direction, failure to offer decision, failure to offer clear way, and failure also of you fail to raise habits. Children can identify with set of habits. Financial habits. How do you spend your morning? Where do you, how do you wake up in the morning? Those small, small habits that are so clear. Eh? The, the children are able to identify with them to say, our family does this. Our parents have taught us this. This is what we do when such, such things happen. This is our habit. I remember in our family when my sister would get married. And I, one of the things that they always insist, no one will get us into marriage without the blessings of our parents. We were brought up. It's, it's an imperative. It's a habit. It's a rule. So uh, we always had weddings. You want a daughter from our place? He said, no, 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 no. According to my parent, you can't just take me away. Come. We receive blessing. We go to the church. We receive blessing. Let's have proper marriage. Proper wedding. The things that are well, well. And I remember one time we had the one of our sisters wanted to have a, a, a garden wedding. And my mother said, no, I can't give out my daughter outside the church altar. What you call garden wedding is ungodly. And I tell you, we have to get a church and an altar. It's, it, you know, she's not passive. She's, she is clear. And, we are, we, and he said, if you do it, he said, if you are going to give, uh, we want me to give out my daughter into that garden thing, I'll not be part to that. I said, now this woman is clear. Let's not be passive. Let's be clear. Until habits, clear habits of faith, clear habits of obeying God are formed early enough. 
We will continue with this teaching because we need to, to, to teach it very well next time. I hope you are studying ways that we can avoid curses. We are saying stay safe from curses. Today we've covered the issue of wrong faith and allowing disobedience in families. Being passive where there's no strict teaching. There's no clear direction. There's, there's a likelihood that family will be open to attacks which should not be allowed. Receive the cover of the blood of Jesus and leave, stay safe from curses. We will continue next time. This, this will help us so well. Thank you.